Hey, what's up everyone? In this new tutorial, we're gonna add the pickup system to our game. Basically, we'll add these gems. And each time we pass through one of these, the number of gems is increased by one. As you can see, it is displayed in this corner. So before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell. I appreciate that. And let's get started. So first of all, we are going to create a jam model. Then we're going to add it to the prefabs, which are these pipes. Then each time we pass through one of the jams, we are going to increase the total number of jams. Basically, we can create a global variable under the scripts folder. Player manager. So first things first, let's create the jam. I've already created the model, which is called jam. Of course, you could use a coin or any kind of pickups. Let's drag it under the level. Of course, you could download all of these models and the assets that you're going to need for this game from the link under the description. First of all, I'm going to change the scale. Let's change it to 35 on the X, the Y and the Z. Then I'm going to assign a new material like red one under materials. Let's right click create then material i'm gonna call it jam let's change its color from the inspector to a red color then to assign it to the jam you simply need to drag it on top of it now to check if the ball passes through the jam we can use the on trigger enter which is basically a function that is called each time we trigger or pass through an object like the jam but before that, we have to add some sort of collider to this jam. Under the inspector, let's add a component. And let's search for a collider. Like the box collider. I think it's fine. You could go under the scene. Then double click on the jam. We have these green edges. I think I'm going to scale it a bit. Let's change the length to 0 0.015. And make sure to check its trigger because we're going to use the on trigger function and not on collision enter. Finally, we need to add some sort of tag to the jam so that we can check if the object is actually the jam and not another one like the obstacle. Here we have the tag parameter. By default, it is set to untagged. Let's add a new one. I've already done that. We have this jam tag, but you could add another one using the plus icon. Then select the jam and assign the jam tag to it and that's all what we need now we can add it to our prefabs which are instantiated infinitely but before that let's create a prefab out of this jam by dragging the object under the prefabs folder and select original one now we can get rid of it from here it is saved after that let's select the vertex one and let's add few jams by dragging the jam model under obstacle we have this little warning basically we need to unpack this prefab so that we can add another object using right click then prefab and unpack now you will be able to add it and let's place it then we can duplicate it using ctrl d and add another one the same thing for the other vertex let's double click on it unpack the prefab using right click prefab unpack then add the jam and so on and once it's done we can hit play and there you go we have jams in this game but nothing is happening when we pass through one of these because we haven't added this logic yet under the scripts folder we can use the on trigger enter function under the player collision let's double click on it we've already used the on collision enter to check if the ball collides with one of the obstacles let's go under here 
and use void on trigger enter this takes an object of type collider not collision let's call it other the same thing we have to check if it's the jam using the compare tag method let's add if other dot game object then dot compare tag this takes a string which is the name jam so this will return true if the object that we pass through has the jam tag in such case we will increase the number of jams that we pick up but we haven't added this variable yet under the player manager that we have created recently we can add another global variable which is the number of jams using public static the type is int and let's call it jams by default we're gonna set it to zero under the start function let's use jams equals zero then let's go back to the player collision script each time we pick up one of the jams we will increment the jams variable using player manager which is the name of the script dot the name of the variable jams then plus plus to increase it by one after that we can get rid of the jam using destroy we give it the game object which is other dot game object and it will get rid of it from the scene and that's what we want finally we can display the number of jams we can create a text then each time we are going to update it to the jams variable let's go back into unity and create a new text which is a ui element we create our uis under the canvas using right click ui and let's use the text mesh pro i'm gonna call it jams text let's move it to this corner by selecting this box then shift alt select this option now we're gonna update its value to the total number of jams by default it is zero i'm gonna put it in the middle and on the right side also let's change the color to a black one let's make it bold now we can add a reference to it and update it under the player manager to create the text mesh pro reference we have to include a namespace using tm pro which stands for the text mesh pro under here let's add public the type is text mesh pro ugy i'm gonna call it gems text sorry because i don't have the autocomplete feature i highly recommend you to use visual studio community it has this feature by default now under the update method which is called over and over again we can update the text gems text dot text equals the variable gems but this takes a string and the gems is an int we have to convert it using dot to string and that's pretty much it let's save our scripts using ctrl s or file save all or save then let's reference the text by selecting the player manager object and drag in the gems text under this field and let's give it a try by default we have zero and each time we pick up a jam as you can see it is increased by one when we have a game over and retry the number of jams is reset to zero basically we have to save it so that we don't lose its value and use it later on to buy some items for example and to implement that inside of unity we have something that is called the player prefs that allows you to save some variables like the number of jams and each time you close the game and open it up again you can load this value from the player prefs it's like a database don't worry it's very simple under a player manager when we have a game over we can use the player prefs to store the total number of jams using player prefs dot set int this takes two parameters the first one is the name of the field or the variable that we want to store i'm gonna call it total number of jams or total jams and we're gonna set it to the number of jams 
but that's going to override the total jams each time we have a game over. We need to get the previous value and add the new number of jams. To do that, we can use player prefs dot get int to get the value, the name which is total jams, and the second one is the default value. By default, it is zero. So this is going to check if we have a total jams variable that is stored in a memory location. In such case, it will grab the value and add it to the jams using plus. And if it doesn't exist, it will create a new one and assign the default value zero. Make sure to add the semicolon. Also, we have to display this number under the text. So I'm going to copy this and paste it. Then we add the number of jams and convert all of that to a string. Let's save our script again. Go back into Unity. By default, we have zero. And if we pick up these jams, it is increased by one. But we have this big problem. As you can see, the number of jams is increasing over and over again. And that's because we have a game over. And this is an update function. It is changing the number of jams over and over again. We have to ensure that these lines are called once. You could add another boolean to check if we have called these lines. And if it's the case, we can return. Or I will simply disable the script once we reach this point using this, which means this script dot enable it equals false. And that fixes the problem. Let's save it. And sometimes you have to reset this number to test the game. To do that, under the start function, let's use player graphs dot delete all. And that resets all of the player graphs variables, like the total number of jams. It is reset to zero. Then you have to get rid of this line of code. So I think that's pretty much it guys for this video. I hope you like it. In the next tutorial, we are going to add some sound effects. For now, the game looks a little bit boring. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you get notified with my videos. And I will see you in the next one.